After the success of WCW vs. NWO World Tour and WCW NWO Revenge for the Nintendo 64, the WWF aimed its sights at THQ to release its future titles. And in 1999, the wrestling game wars shifted in favor of the WWF with the release of WrestleMania 2000. After spending countless hours in my early teens playing Revenge, I was more than excited to get my hands on WWF WrestleMania 2000. And to my extreme satisfaction, I discovered upon the first five minutes of the game that it pretty much was revenge, only now everything that was WCW is replaced with WWF. Right down to the game's intro, it's almost identical to the one seen in Revenge. Now THQ and AKI weren't one-trick ponies, you gotta understand business. Revenge was a successful game and the WWF wanted that same success, so why fix what's not broken? The intro from Revenge is great, cool, throw some WWF guys in there and follow the same format. And really that's what you're going to see throughout this entire review. Now at this time in the WWF, things were starting to heat up for the company. If you were watching at the time, you'll remember that this was kind of the shifting point in power. Guys like The Rock and Austin were coming to their prime, guys like Jericho and Big Show were jumping ship from WCW, and guys like Triple H were breaking out to become great single competitors. Not to mention the intense tag teams that were emerging in the business like the Hardys, Edge and Christian, New Age Outlaws, and the Acolytes. And no promotion is complete without some jobbers thrown in the mix. Now everybody worth a damn in the WWF at the time is here in the game. They really didn't miss anybody other than Owen Hart who was removed from the development of the game after his tragic death. You can even play as Vince and Shane McMahon which is great and another thing I've always loved about this series is the fact that there are four attires for each wrestler and with a feature to edit each wrestler right down to their hair, face and ring gear it brings plenty of options for those four attire slots. While WCW NWO Revenge did have entrances, they did not feature authentic entrance themes. WrestleMania 2000 on the other hand does. Though due to the limitations of the N64 they are low quality and most of them have a point in each song where it just starts to loop about 10 seconds of audio over and over again. But come on, if you owned an N64 you knew you weren't getting CD quality audio or motion video, so I never really saw this as a negative aspect of the game. Now up until this point, there was not a WWF game in existence that featured Titantron videos and I can remember like it was yesterday seeing a preview for the game in a magazine and there it was. A screenshot of Stone Cold Steve Austin making his entrance, the raw backdrop behind him and his video being displayed upon the giant Tron. And like I just discovered gold, I ran and showed all my friends in excitement. Now to most, it may not be a big advancement in gaming but to me it was a big step one step closer to feeling like the real deal. And the quality again isn't that great, but who cares? I mean, we got Titantron videos, even if they are just pixelated images in a slideshow. There's always been mixed feelings about the graphics in the THQ wrestling titles. Are they great? Well, my opinion, I don't think they're great. The wrestlers look like crash test dummies, and just about everybody shares the same body size and overall appearance. But that's just part of the charm of the game. I mean, I can't imagine them doing it any differently. Besides, the gameplay is so damn good, you won't even be paying attention to the graphics. And that brings us to, well, gameplay. Now, I've already discussed the basics of this game engine in my reviews for World Tour and Revenge, and honestly, things haven't changed much here in WrestleMania 2000. There are a few tweaks and additions, but the bigger changes wouldn't come until No Mercy. Some of the differences include the name of the spirit meter being changed to attitude meter and Earl Hebner plays the role of the pop-in referee animation. One thing that always stood out to me when I was younger about this game was the realistic look of the moves. Most wrestling games had moves that were over exaggerated or just had horrible move animations. This game features amazing move animations and some of the best looking finishers I've seen in a wrestling game to date. One of the big additions and upgrades over Revenge is the new cage match. Now by default you have to climb up and out of the cage to win, but you can change the match to include pin if you want to. This was the best looking cage match at the time, hands down. Everything before this always had some kind of flaw to it, like not being able to see into the ring clearly due to the cage, or the ropes and ring posts completely missing from the ring. 
There's also a King of the Ring tournament, and you can create your own pay-per-view just like an attitude. Royal Rumble was always a favorite of mine, especially if you have three other players with you. You can select up to 30 wrestlers with four in the ring at one time, and each time somebody's thrown out of the ring, another wrestler will enter. If there's anything to complain about here in this match type, it would probably be the fact that it's a little too easy to eliminate people. Road to WrestleMania mode puts you on track to the WWF title, starting with Sunday Night Heat and usually in tag team matches with partners that are nowhere near your league. You'll work your way up to Raw and pay-per-views, competing for most, if not all, of the championships. The only problem I have with this mode is some of the matches are pretty damn tough. The AI will block and counter just about everything you throw at it as you progress. Now when it's guys like The Undertaker, it's understandable, but when I'm facing Midian for the European Championship as The Rock and I can barely get a single move in, there's just something wrong there. There are some cutscenes here and there, but they're few and far in between and don't really have much substance. Overall, even though it's a bit on the difficult side and pretty long, it's a great mode to play through and to top it off, there's some unlockables. They were pretty generous with the arena selection for the time, giving us the normals like Raw, Heat, and WrestleMania, but we also get Royal Rumble, King of the Ring, Survivor Series, and SummerSlam, and each one looks pretty good. I really don't have any complaints other than the fact that there are two versions of each stage, a high quality version that's shown when a wrestler is making his entrance on the stage, and a lower quality version that's shown at all other times. I'm guessing they did this to conserve memory or something. I did mention the ability to edit any wrestler in the game, which is a really cool feature. Say it's 1999, you just got the game and one of your favorite wrestlers just cut his hair in real life. But you can go right into the edit mode and change his hair. This was really innovative, and a similar but not as extensive version of this has been featured in recent WWE games. Along with this, you can also create a new wrestler from scratch. And while I feel it's a way better create a wrestler mode than the one featured in Attitude, I still feel it doesn't feature as much variety, but regardless, this mode was vital to my daily play of this game. There's also a create a belt mode, though it's pretty limited. You pick a pre-designed appearance for your belt, then name it. After that, you can defend it whenever you please. At the end of the day, THQ did exactly what the WWF wanted them to do. They took revenge, ripped off the WCW logo, and slapped a big WWF one on it. And everybody was happy. I mean. It doesn't get any better than WrestleMania 2000, does it? Oh, that's right. There's that other game that came after it. But that's for another time.